the Eden city, kingdom of King Jesus. It's perfect because everyone is filled with the knowledge of the Lord, a knowledge, of course, that we struggle to grasp at now. But the Lord continues to reveal himself to us today so that our false gods are, are let go of and we turn in repentance and faith again and again to Jesus until we become like Jesus. But who is this kingdom for? Our final section today is a marvellous picture. In verse 10 and verse 12, we're told that the king, Jesus, will raise a banner, a sign, uh, waving uh, to the nation, saying, here is the kingdom of God, to draw all God's people home. But who are these people? In verse 12 and 13, we get this lovely image. Remember, so far in Isaiah, Israel and Judah have been enemies. Israel has tried to uh, replace King Ahaz with a, a puppet king. And to destroy the nation. But in verse 12, the king, Jesus, will gather the remnant of both Judah and Israel and restore them to one people. Verse 13, there'll be the enmity between them will disappear as they're drawn back into that single kingdom of King David under his greater son. Of course, that, that in itself is an extraordinary promise, isn't it? Indeed, one would say an impossible promise. And very shortly after, Isaiah would have prophesied these things. Syria and, and Israel were wiped out. Israel uh, never to be a kingdom again. The people scattered to the four winds and uh, bred out of existence. And yet it will happen. Isaiah promises, God promises. God is going to bring a remnant of the two nations together. He's going to perform a, a second exodus, a rescue from Assyria verse 16, as there was for Israel when they came up out of Egypt. But there's more, isn't there? Chapter 4 has already alerted us to the fact that the remnant will be drawn from the nations, not just out of the nations. And so the surviving remnant of his people will be drawn from Assyria and Egypt and Babylon, all, all their enemy nations. I don't think this just means out from them, the way you would take, say, a green marble out from a bunch of red ones out from amongst them, I take it it means that God will draw his people from the people who are Assyrians and Babylonians as well. And not just taking the green marble, but taking some of the red marbles to be his as well. A people who are drawn from the four quarters of the earth, verse 12. From every tribe and tongue and people. And why wouldn't the nations want to come? His resting place will be glorious, an everlasting rest for him and for all of his people with him. Jesus tells us, doesn't he, in the Sermon on the Mount, to seek first the kingdom of God, to desire it, to desire to be there above all. Isaiah tells us in verse 10 how to seek first the kingdom. Rally to the king. And why wouldn't you come to Jesus? People from every people group reconciled together, justice done, suffering and death finished forever. The knowledge of the Lord filling the earth as the waters cover the sea. Why wouldn't you want to be there? And yet some won't come to Jesus. And for them, the arrival of the king, this promise of the arrival of the king is a warning. For Jesus comes not only to gather his people, but uh, because he's not just the meek and mild carpenter, he comes as a, a warrior king. Verse 14, he will plunder the peoples to the east and the Philistines to the west. Jesus doesn't come to simply establish one kingdom among many. He will brook no rivals. There will be no other kingdoms to belong to. For the knowledge of the Lord will fill the whole earth. His enemies will be torn down and crushed beneath his feet. And his garden city will swell up to fill the whole earth. Oh, Isaiah 11 is a, a promise that is given to Isaiah and his people and to us today to sustain our hearts in a time of trial. To remember that God is behind the trials to lead us to be home with him under the rule of King Jesus, waiting for the day of fulfilment. But it is a warning to the nations, isn't it? And to us, if we're wavering in our commitment to Jesus, don't stand against him. Those are the choices. Rally to him or stand against him. There is no sitting on the fence here. You cannot win if you stand against him. The only sensible choice is to rally to his banner. And if you do, you'll find the deepest longings of your heart 
will be fulfilled. The longing for Eden, the longing for home will be met in King Jesus. And for those of us who are already committed to following Jesus, our passage this morning is an invitation to get to know God better and better through the Lord Jesus. So only as we come to fully understand the knowledge of God that we're able to be fit for his kingdom, that will be completed on the day Jesus returns and we see him face to face. But even now, as we have a choice how to spend our time and energies, let's not stand in the shallows of the knowledge of God. Let's go deeply into the depths. For it's only as we come to know God more fully that we see how great he is, learn to trust him more deeply in every situation, and begin to see that only he can truly satisfy the longings of our hearts. For it's only in Jesus Christ that we can be brought to our true home. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for showing us a a glorious picture of the future. Please help us to uh, drink deeply from it this week. Uh, Stir our hearts to to recognise that this is the home we long for. And help us to trust in Jesus alone, in you alone, as the saviour, as the rescuer who will bring us there. Father, I pray for any who are watching who don't yet know you, please would you uh, cause them to desire this enough to make that commitment today for Jesus' sake. Amen. We are going to sing uh, the New Kingdom, a song that is drawn out of this and other passages in Isaiah, looking forward to the, the day of Jesus' return.